Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday morning again, and it is the Monday after Thanksgiving in 2022. I hope you've had a great holiday. I hope if you traveled, it went without any difficulties and problems, and I'm glad that you're here today. Today in the Christian tradition, we are now in the season of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting, anticipating for what God will do. And I think it's an apt season, especially when so many people experience the depths of, of grief and depression and despair this time of year. Let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Niantic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is an outreach effort to connect those with the resources they need to grow their faith and their spirit, and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Welcome today. So here we are, already into the season of Advent, and a time that a lot of people wait for all year round, and some people dread its coming. Wherever you are in this emotional landscape, know that the, the good things of God, higher power spirit, however you refer to that, to that transcendence in our world, those good gifts are for you. They're available to you regardless of how you feel in the moment. And I want to help you incorporate and anchor yourself in those promises and in those good gifts. Today, I want to talk about how we can cultivate positive emotions in our lives and not just positivity, but how to incorporate those things, those power emotions that help us to get through the difficult times and build a life that is resilient, that is strong, and that can provide us hope in challenging times. So let's jump in. We hear a lot about superfoods. You know, eat blueberries, the uh, uh, the ACAI, I'm never sure how to pronounce that, acai berry, AC berry, I don't know, but to eat those things that will supercharge our bodies, there are also emotions that will supercharge our emotional health. And the thing about emotional health and spirituality is they go hand in hand. If we grow our spiritual practices, we set ourselves up to empower growth in our emotions as well. Likewise, when we work on our emotional health, it is not only supported by our spiritual practices, but it multiplies them as well. Excuse me. So let's get into it. 10 superpower emotions. Let's call them power emotions that can help you to build a life that is resilient and strong. Let's begin. The first up is gratitude. Gratitude is the biggest change maker in our lives. When you are good at or consistent at developing a gratitude practice, you're going to notice a lot of benefits. Abundance will appear and fear disappears when you have a gratitude practice in your life. You can improve your health, create loving relationship, expand your happiness, all of these things with a gratitude practice. It is a simple, single most greatest power to change your life. And you'll begin to see some of those, uh, the rays of hope cut through the gloomy times. And whatever you're feeling now in the season of Advent, know that it's a season and you may experience other seasons in your life as we all do when things are difficult. When we are in a, uh, a place that doesn't feel hopeful, where we are uh, closer to depression and gloominess or grief, we all experience those seasons. Seasons come, seasons go, and we can facilitate the coming of a new season when we engage in these power emotions and specifically and especially gratitude. Put that at the top of your list. Second is hunger. <clears throat> we know what it's like when our bellies are hungry, but when our spirits are hungry, when our souls are hungry, that determination to make change happen is a powerful force. Honestly, we're not going to experience much change in our lives if we don't have a hunger 
for what that change will bring. If you're going to create lasting value in your life and in the world beyond, you need to have a hunger, cultivate a hunger for that change that you want to see happen. Passion. When you do what you love, it's no longer work. Passion breaks old patterns of thinking and shakes your mind free from limiting beliefs. When you engage with what lights you up inside and use that in a way to better your life, to better the life of those lives of those around you, powerful things happen. So connect with your passion. And then of course, the greatest of these is love, love and warmth. Love has a tremendous power to conquer any kind of negative emotion it collides with. When love is in the room, no other emotions will stand a chance. Be kind and gracious to yourself and extend that to others as well. People can be mean, wicked and crude even and unkind, but when that comes into contact with love, it disarms it. So when you radiate love, it makes you a better person, but also the people around you will be affected by it as well. Curiosity. Nothing is a chore when you have curiosity. One of the main reasons children never get bored is because they experience everything, even the most obvious things, with a curious mind and heart. They have a sense of wonder about them. I remember walking with my now 12 year old when he was three and a simple walk around the block could take half a day because he had so much curiosity and wonder at everything he saw and encountered. When we have curiosity, nothing is boring. And it, it's important to note that we can be curious about why we are feeling the way we feel or why others are feeling the way they feel, or why they are reacting the way they feel. If you encounter someone who always frustrates you, and we have those people in our lives, we have that person or those people that just always we bump up against. If we can cultivate some curiosity in that space, I wonder what brought this person to this behavior. I wonder what childhood was like for this person. It can really change our mindsets and the outcome of a situation. So cultivate a sense of curiosity. At least life will be more fun, right? A flexibility and adaptability. We live in a world where nothing is fixed, nothing is permanent, other than the love of higher power, the spirit of God that is always present. Anything outside of that is going to change, it's going to grow, it's going to adapt. Anything can happen, and therefore the amount of uncertainty that we're willing and able to live with is going to have a lot to do with the happiness we experience. So the more flexible and adaptable we are, the better we're going to negotiate the changes that life brings. To me, we can work on our adaptability, but I experience more adaptability as a result of working on other emotions and other aspects of my life. For instance, gratitude. When I work on gratitude, my adaptability in a situation increases. So do a lot of other things. But confidence and faithfulness is our next one. You'll enjoy the sense of certainty you desire when you have an unshakable confidence. Trusting that things will work out and exerting eagerness to experience that power of faith is what it means to be confident. Spirituality and emotional growth and health go hand in hand. Faith and confidence. Trust that there is a future for you. Trust that things will work out. Trust that in this difficult season, another one awaits. Cheerfulness. All right. Now, let's be real for a minute. When you're not feeling it and you try to be cheerful, it comes across as fake and insincere. I get that. So let's not do that. But um, if you want a life that is cheerful, engage in these other practices. Like adaptability and flexibility, cheerfulness will come about 
when we have a greater sense of love in our lives for ourselves and for others, when we work again on gratitude. All of these things go together, they weave hand in hand, and life isn't fun when you're grumpy. Life's a lot more fun when you're happy and when you're cheerful. So work on these other emotions and allow cheerfulness to have a front row seat. Vitality. Vitality is that life force, that energy with which we engage life. Consciously choose to have a state of mind and work on a state of mind that's rich in energy. Now we might think there are people that are just naturally energetic, and that's true, some people are. But don't think the opposite, that because you're not necessarily energetic that you can't be. This is a learned skill, and it comes from cultivating it within ourselves. When we decide that we are masters of our own minds and our own thoughts and our own emotions, we can create that energy, that inner vitality that will help us to power through the difficult things in life. And finally, a sense of contribution. Contribute your gifts and abilities to the greater good. When we do that, there's an intrinsic reward that comes from doing good. Uh, do you recall that Friends episode with Phoebe and Joey where they were debating about whether there was a true selfless act that we could do? And the conclusion is no. When we work for others, when we serve, when we give, there's an inner reward that we experience as well. And that's good news. When we contribute our gifts and abilities to the broader world, it ignites something within ourselves as well. So contribute, find a way, find a place. It doesn't have to be on a big stage. It can be in, in small ways, but even the smallest ways are powerful ways. Find a way to contribute and to give back, to experience life's deepest joys, contribute selflessly and sincerely into the lives of others. Now, as you can see, these powerful emotions, they build on one another. Once you develop a gratitude practice, you will experience greater cheerfulness, you'll have more vitality, you'll have a greater adaptability because you see abundance all around you. Your spiritual life will both support the emotional growth that you do and will be enriched by it. So this is what I have for you today. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If you'd like to connect, send me a message and click on the link below, check out the blog. And there's also a YouTube site I'm trying to grow. It's Melissa Ebkin. Just go to YouTube and type in Melissa Ebkin or at Melissa Ebkin and it'll take you to the channel and you'll find these Monday morning reflections there. You'll find the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast videos there and you will find YouTube shorts. So let me know what you would like to hear about and be blessed this week. Bye for now.